Now, it's no secret that the Sega Dreamcast is the last Sega console ever. I ask myself a lot, why does it have such pathetic copy protection, or at the very least, such easily bypassable copy protection? The Sega Saturn, the console that was released before the Dreamcast, had copy protection that took 20 years to crack, or at least according to every result on Google. It's a major pain to make a backup copy for the, for the Saturn, at least for the casual copier. Making a backup copy for the Dreamcast, however, is incredibly easy to make. Just find a CDI image under 700 megabytes, get Dreamcast drivers for the image burn, and then, dream, and then burn it to a CDR. Occasionally you need a Utopia disk, but not in most circumstances. By the way, a Utopia disk is a special disk image that allows you to boot import and backup games. In case it doesn't work. My two reasons for the Dreamcast's horrendous copy protection system are 1. The use of another disk format and 2. Implementation of mil CD. Let's start with number 1. The use of another disk format. Sega decided to use the GD-ROM format which allowed games up to 1GB in size. They figured that since nobody was making GD burners then and now it would be impossible to copy your games to a format not, not a whole lot of companies were manufacturing. Which, in my opinion, is a pretty good thing on Sega Zen. The GD format itself contains two separate sections. A CD-ROM compatible area for saying, don't put this in a CD player, doofus. And then the GD-ROM area, you know, for the game. This meant that the drive needed to be CD-ROM compatible. You know, a small step for copy protection defeat. And this brings me into my next reason. Number two, the implementation of mil CD. The mil CD format was a special format made by Sega that allowed interactive content on a standard CD. Not just fancy screensavers for your PC, but also Dreamcast program code. This meant that the Dreamcast could use its CD compatible drive and run unprotected code from a regular CD. Do you see the problem here? If you were to get a hold of a Dreamcast image, then theoretically you could just burn it as a mil CD. Granted, it must fit on a CD, but the Dreamcast wouldn't care. You would just see it as a mil CD, and therefore, it would run the code. This brings me to my conclusion. Sega ultimately used a format as a copy protection scheme, which usually doesn't get very far, and implemented a potentially unsafe feature, which was removed on version 2 Dreamcasts. Now, making backups and running unofficial code on the Dreamcast is easier than blinking nowadays, and the mil CD is, is rarely talked about. But burning techniques have gotten better, which leaves the Dreamcast a good system to get into because you can make a decent backup copy to start playing without worrying that your old copy of Crazy Taxi will spontaneously explode from the scratches. If you're a coder, you can easily make games and play them quickly. I don't condone piracy, however. These systems were put into place for a reason, no matter how laughably bad they are. Own the original games because the boss says you should. And that's a bit for my video.